a long day. Uh, so welcome to our Educator Effectiveness and Leadership Development Annual Teacher Webinar. We are really, really thankful that you made time out of your day to come here. And uh, for now, we would love for you to introduce yourself to the room by typing in your name and district and responding to our questions about something you're excited about that you accomplished this week and especially any questions that you have for us. Um, if you haven't been in a Teams meeting before to orient you to your controls, up in that top right hand corner, um, there is a person uh, with a hand raised. Those are your reactions. So you can give us feedback uh, on your status, um, give us feedback on volume or pace or content um, using those buttons at the top. Um, we also invite you at any time throughout the meeting to use the chat to ask questions, to put in your reactions, um, to add your two cents, and we'll certainly be asking for your participation throughout. Um, for now, we have muted your mics, and we'd ask you to keep your mics muted until we open up for questions. When it's time for questions, you may raise your hand or type questions into the chat box. Um, as we're waiting for those responses about what you're tuning your own horn about, how you're supporting your colleagues, I'll go ahead and introduce our team that's on the call with us today. Joining us today are Faye Colley, um, who is running the slides. Um, Beverly Flythe is unable to be here today. She's out uh, supporting our school counselors at one of their regional meetings, but she's with us in spirit. Dr. Kimberly Howard is here, and she'll be helping us out with responses in the chat as well as Dr. Vicki Troffler, um, who's also here and responding in the chat. Um, and Dr. Vicki Troffler wears two hats on our effectiveness team. She supports principal evaluations as well as being our team leader. Um, so we're really thankful to have all of them here. My name is Lilla Toll Monsager, and I'm the director in the Office of Educator Effectiveness and Leadership Development. I'm really thankful to work with this talented team, and I can tell you honestly that they model growth mindset in everything that they do. Uh, we don't survive very long in the education profession pretending that we're perfect or trying to be perfect. All of the very best teachers and leaders realize that reflection and feedback and that continuous cycle are really a key to staying motivated and to serve our students even better. And I'm very thankful that these talented and reflective educators lead our work in a educator evaluation. They push me to be better every single day and they're some of the most reflective people that I've ever made. So shout out to them. On our next slide, we're excited to introduce you a little bit to our office, um, the Office of Educator Effectiveness and Leadership Development. But as I'm doing that, I am very nosy to know who's in the room. So definitely keep those chat responses coming, something you're proud of, your name and um, your school. But also please answer this question, this poll in the chat. Are you a teacher? Are you a school administrator? a uh, coach of some sort, a district administrator, are you here from the State Department? We'd love to know your responses and I'll tell you a little bit about the work of our office. Our mission is to grow educators to lead schools where all students have equitable access to effective leadership. And when we examined the commonalities in schools that excel in supporting the growth of all students, we found that they really have two things in common. First, the culture and environment where students, families, and teachers want to be there and feel really supported and included, and having a clear vision for instruction. And so that's why our focus is on culture and instruction. What our office does up in the top circle is provide professional learning and coaching to support our educator effectiveness systems, new teacher and new principal induction, and to deepen instructional leadership through year-long leadership development cohorts. All of the professional learning that we offer does model our three priorities of personalization, collective leadership, and attention to equitable access to effective instruction. It's our deep hope that by supporting leaders to focus on creating strong cultures and systems that support instruction, we'll get to the re desired results of keeping more effective teachers and growing more effective students. Um, and we appreciate y'all signing in for a teacher webinar. We sure do have a lot of folks joining us from school administration and district administration. So we appreciate the administrators on the call too, even though we have designed the experience for teachers. 
Um, if we click one more time, if you're interested in following our work, um, our social media information is available here. You can follow us at hashtag SCTS rubric, hashtag collective leadership. You can check out our work with new principals at at PIP leaders on Twitter, or you can follow the State Department at Education SC um, on all platforms. So on Facebook, Twitter, I think we're even on Instagram. Um, so we appreciate y'all checking out the work that we're doing. As far as our work today, if we head on to the next slide, the South Carolina Department of Education believes that educator evaluation is all about growth and development. And ADEPT, uh, which is the term that we use for teacher evaluation, actually stands for something. It's assisting, developing, and evaluating professional teaching. We didn't just pick those words because they make a nice acronym. Uh, giving assistance and feedback on growth and development, we think are necessary parts of the evaluation process. It's also necessary to call out that teaching is a profession, and in our opinion, one of the most amazing professions with opportunities for growth, fulfillment, and impact across the state and in your communities. Today's agenda marks a really big moment for us because if we take those separate sections of ADEPT, starting in 2016, our office started working with stakeholder groups, giving surveys, hitting the road uh, to go out to schools and talk to folks. And we did the work of updating teacher evaluations and special area evaluations in the state to be more growth focused. Many of you were part of those efforts, and we're really appreciative of your contributions to those changes as we've made this shift. So today's webinar feels a little different for us because we won't focus as deeply on the evaluation systems and how to use SC Lead and what flexibilities we need for COVID. Instead, we'll look at the assisting part of ADEPT first by zooming in on the South Carolina teaching standards. And then we'll look at resources for personalizing your professional learning. And then we'll share resources that might help you support your colleagues. And we'll invite you to share feedback with us. Throughout the webinar, we'll be posing questions and fielding questions from you in the chat. So please make sure that you add those as we go. Um, on our first slide, before we move out of this introductory section, we do want to share a little bit of evaluation data with you. So feel free to go to that next slide, Faye. Um, when we look at this evaluation data from 2021, um, our first click, uh, there were still some COVID flexibilities in place in 2021. But from a statewide perspective, if we look at all of the evaluation ratings given for formative, summative, and goals-based evaluations across the state, we saw a return to this more normal distribution, um, including less than 1% un unsatisfactory, less than 1% not reported, 70% um, of all evaluations proficient, and 28% overall exemplary. Um, if we click again um, and we compare to 2021-2022, um, we saw the exact same uh, percentages. So we see that consistent set of ratings from our trained evaluators happening again with the statewide distribution in 2021-22. If we zoom in and look at SLO ratings um, on, in that next graph in 2021, 41% of SLOs were scored exemplary with 55% proficient. And you'll know from looking at the student learning objective rubric that to score exemplary, you have to have high student growth and high engagement in the process. Um, if we look at the ratings for this year, similar, we saw 54% of student learning objectives rated as proficient and 42% rated as exemplary. Um, the percentages were nearly identical. As important as we think that aggregate is and as interesting as it is, we do think zooming in a little bit on the South Carolina teaching standards gives us a more interesting picture and a more nuanced picture of teachers' growth and development. And so that's what our next section focuses on. Uh, the tool at the heart of educator evaluation in South Carolina is the South Carolina teaching standards. And if we're talking about our special area educators, our librarians, our counselors, and our speech language professionals, they also have their own set of rubrics that are correlated to the South Carolina teaching standards. Um, it's worth saying that any work of school improvement, and you can see the graphic for South Carolina's school improvement model, 
um, is going to start with diagnosing needs and making a plan, zooming in on which of those needs you're going to address, implementing a strategy to address the needs, and then monitoring and evaluating the plan. And this improvement cycle, whether it's taking place for an individual student to meet her needs, or it's taking uh, the place of an individual teacher around a professional goal and a growth goal that you have, or it's a whole school with a set of priorities, it's going to happen in a specific context. And we know every classroom is different, every student is different, every teacher is different. And making a plan that fits the circumstances in that context are really, really important. But the next factor that makes continuous improvement stick is having common language. And that's where the South Carolina teaching standards can provide a common language across the entire state for what excellent teaching and learning should look like and sound like in every classroom. And finally, we believe that consistency is really, really important to school improvement as well. When we're looking to improve student performance, our own professional practices, staying focused on the plan and looking at the evidence of success from that plan and the interventions that we've implemented is really important. And as much as the South Carolina teaching standards can provide that consistent common language, when we look at the next slide, if you look at the whole teaching standards rubric as a whole, it can be a little intimidated dating. We acknowledge that that 17 page document with four domains and 23 indicators and a lot of bullet points and tiny little writing that you can zoom in on if you plus plus on your PDF um, to make them blow up to kind of a readable phase can be a little bit intimidating. But unfortunately, but fortunately, when we're thinking about growth and development, we're not asking you to look at every single indicator all at once. When we train teacher evaluators for how that they should rate lessons using the rubric, we emphasize how one strong piece of evidence from a lesson can and should count under multiple different indicators on the rubric. The rubric is holistic, it's interconnected, and when you're doing something great in assessment, it's very likely that you are also doing something great in standards and objectives. Um, you're also doing something aligned in activities and materials, and you probably have a strong teacher knowledge of students if that assessment is resulting in student growth. Um, we also train evaluators and coaches that when they're working with teachers, particularly in a post conference, they should zoom in on giving feedback on a specific indicator and then on a specific bullet point within that indicator. That's why the post conference is designed to have just one area of reinforcement and one area of refinement. Um, now that we're past 2018-19, which is our first year that all schools in South Carolina use the rubric, evaluators and teachers are more familiar with it. And we're hoping that it can be a tool that's used much more for that assisting part of ADEPT and the developing part, um, just as much as it is for the evaluating part. And we want to share with you a little bit um, for how that could work. But first, let's start with some data. Over on the left hand side um, is some more specific data about indicators in the rubric and the highest and lowest scoring indicators on average in the teaching rubric. First off, it's important to know that overall teachers average at least three or proficient on most indicators. The difference between the highest and lowest scoring on average is not that great. So I don't want you to make too much of the fact that these are the highest and these are the lowest. Although with as many evaluations that happen across the state, it's interesting to look at patterns. And if we look at the patterns for the past two years, respectful culture, environment, and content knowledge have been the top strengths for teacher performance. And then thinking, questioning, and grouping have been in the areas of growth. Um, assessment is a new area that we've seen kind of move up um, in terms of uh, the need, uh, the area of growth for teachers this year. And we've also seen grouping take on more importance. This makes a lot of sense when we think about the learning needs that we've seen um, over the COVID period. We have a lot of students who have a lag in their learning. And so both assessment and grouping become more important, but also a little bit more complex when you've got that range going on inside your classroom. On the right is a different set of data, and this shows the indicators that observers most often picked 
as the area of growth or refinement for teachers. You can see that questioning is the highest with almost uh, 5,200 and I think that's 30 observations in South Carolina selecting that as the area of refinement last year. Um, and you also see grouping students. Those are similar with those areas of need we saw when we looked at the averages. The other indicator that we see that's a common refinement is lesson structure and pacing. And if we think about the fact that most of the observations in South Carolina are happening on teachers who are earlier on in their career, it makes sense that lesson structure and pacing is something that often our early career teachers need some support with. We show you this data not to say, oh, look at South Carolina teachers, they have lots of areas of growth. You could put this data up about any teachers anywhere in the country. That's the nat nature of our profession. There are always areas of strength and always areas of growth. We share this in part to let you know that your district also has access to this kind of data. It's our hope that they personalize professional learning for teachers based on the data that they have. And that's certainly some of the work that we do. Our office is trying to work with districts and with other offices here at the South Carolina Department of Education to think about how we might support these areas like questioning, thinking, and assessment more strategically. And actually, I was lucky enough to go work with a group of educators from the Office of Standards and Assessment earlier today, and we were talking about exactly this. So. Um, we, we were working on it today. If we look at the South Carolina Teaching Standards rubric, though, we can think of them a little bit like an index. We can sort through them with the four domains and then the 23 indicators. And then for each indicator, there, there's four levels of performance from unsatisfactory all the way to exemplary that are a little bit more descriptive. And we know exemplary matches up with a more student-centered approach whereas the descriptors over an unsatisfactory are going to be more of a teacher-centered approach. When we work with coaches and principals to try to understand how to use the rubric, we often think about individual bullet points or descriptors as the unit of change for coaching individual teachers. So for example, if I had a teacher I was working with who was uh, scoring in needs improvement for the environment, maybe let's look at just that first bullet point. They engage students in learning with clear and rigorous ac academic expectations for most students. One of the things we could work together on as we were working through coaching them is how do you move from that two to a three where you're engaging students in learning with those same clear and rigorous academic expectations, but you're also, for every student, having aligned materials and resources that are easy for students to access. So the work we'd be doing would be around how to create those aligned materials and resources that really lined up with the expectations. You could imagine that you might have a teacher who's already scoring in the proficient for expectations, and the next step for them would be to move to the green, to the four, where they have those clear and rigorous expectations, but the difference is actively using aligned and differentiated materials and resources to ensure equitable access to learning. So that might be a place where a teacher is thinking about how do I set expectations and have materials that are differentiated for my multilingual learners, for my students with disabilities, for my students who are pushing beyond this learning objective and have already shown mastery of it and making sure that those materials align. If we check out the next slide, zooming in on an individual indicator in the rubric as you think about professional growth and development is going to automatically help you improve in other areas. We can see if we just look at expectations, that has an impact on teacher knowledge of students, lesson structure and pacing, motivating students, academic feedback, instructional plans, and assessment. And you could do this spider web mapping for every single part of the rubric. Um, according to a change management guru that we like to use when we're thinking through change with leaders in the state, John Cotter says that wins are the molecules of, pro of results. They must be recognized, collected, and communicated early and often to track progress and energize volunteers to persist. When we think about that, the bullet points are really the molecules of success in the rubric. And by focusing in on those descriptors, we can see measurable growth over a short time. Um, so knowing that, we would love to get your reaction 
um, to kind of your best hits, your favorite hits in the South Carolina Teaching Standards rubric. So we have another poll um, that we're going to launch for you. We would love for you to pick two of these parts of the South Carolina Teaching Standards. When you're trying to create a strong classroom culture, what do you think is most important from setting high expectations all the way down to building relationships? Take a look at that list and think about two that you think are most important. And team, um, EELD team, definitely let me know if you can't see. The poll. We can see it. Thank you. All right, we'll let those responses keep rolling in. Um, and if we go to the next slide, the next resource we want to share with you that's not exactly the rubric, but very connected to the rubric, um, is another piece of common language, and that's the responsive and inclusive teaching practices. Those are listed here, and where they come from is we heard so much from schools, especially in that 1920 and transition to 2021 school year, that one of the hardest parts of COVID was connecting with students and families. And so in some cases, just getting students to show up and submit work was really, really difficult. Um, and so our office came together to look at the research and highlight four key responsive and inclusive teaching practices that align to the South Carolina Teaching Standards rubric and describe teaching practice that promotes learning experiences that are rigorous, relevant, engaging and accessible. Um, those four uh, those four practices are listed here. Um, and if we head to the next slide, we'll show you a resource that's available to you. Um, this is the responsive and inclusive teaching standards document. And it's got a different, it's got a different page for each of those four practices. And we're sharing a link in the chat in a moment um, to that document so you can see it. I'll walk you through it though, because we were very intentional about trying to show an alignment between what the research says about that practice, what the rubric descriptors actually say in different indicators in the rubric, as well as what that would look like and sound like in a classroom. And if you were coaching a teacher, some conference questions that you could ask to get at that idea of a safe space for learning. Again, Common language can be a really, really powerful tool, especially if you're collaborating with other teachers across the hall to really create that school environment that's going to keep students engaged. Focusing in on one of these responsive and inclusive strategies is one of the ways that you can do that, whether you're designing professional learning or designing your own professional growth and development plan. Similarly, there has also been an update that allows you to personalize your growth and development in the student learning objective form. Um, so if we head to the next slide, um, we just wanted to put the word out there uh, that as of, I think, 2021, we officially changed the template to include a teacher leadership goal as part of the SLO. This is completely optional and it's something your district can choose to do or your school can choose to do, um, but it really came out of feedback from the field. We were hearing from some teacher leaders that they felt a little pressed doing both an SLO goal and doing something like goals for national board or goals around supporting a student teacher or goals around mentoring a group of new teachers at the school. And so knowing that all of that collegial support that teacher leaders do is really, really important and important to recognize and measure, we created the teacher leadership goal as an option that districts have the flexibility to allow educators to use as an additional professional growth and development plan goal in addition to the SLO or in place of the SLO. And that is a, a district decision for whether to do that. Um, we really do think it could help if you have one of those leadership goals around supporting other teachers 
or you're trying to learn a special certification in your content area, like going for a national board certification, that you can then multiply your impact within the school by sharing those best practices. Um, we would love to actually hear if there's anyone in the room who has done a leadership goal as part of your evaluation, or if you know of a district that's testing us out, testing it out, please let us know first which district it is so we could reach out to them and check it out or maybe reach out to you. And we'd love your honest feedback. If you tried it and it was complicated or it didn't work, please also let us know in the chat. We'd definitely love to get that feedback as well. So those, that was our assisting section. Um, zooming in on how to use some common language and some tools. Now we're going to shift to our developing section of our webinar, and this will include different ways that you can personalize your own professional learning journey. Um, the first resource that we're going to focus in on um, is our brand new free to South Carolina educators professional learning library. It's accessible inside of SC Lead and it offers engaging online courses that you can use for professional development and as a free resource. As we take you through, through more details, we have one more poll that we invite you to answer, actually a couple about the professional learning library. The first is, um, have you had a chance to check it out yet? Um, so we'll put that out there. We're just curious, have you, have you clicked on it? Do you know what this is? Have you heard of it before? Um, we're also, we'll put up uh, a question in a second and ask you a little more deeply if you have had a chance to look at it or once you know what it is, what you'd like to see in it. Um, but I'll give you a little bit of an introduction to it. So if we could go to the next slide, um, we're partnering with both uh, PowerSchool and Educational Impact to provide this professional learning library and our content partner is educational impact they have this premium library that south carolina now has access to that has video interviews with state teachers of the year it has educational experts uh, like a whole series from marzano um, it's got 7,000 videos of professional practice in it, as well as um, 359 courses uh, that are self-paced that you could go in and take right now. Um, and it looks like as we look at the poll, most folks have not had a chance to check this out yet. So we're excited to share with you where you can do that. And I do see that a hand popped up for a moment. Um, if you wanna just type that question in the chat, please feel free to do so as we go. Um, if we head to the next slide, we'll share with you a little bit more about some of the topics available. Um, when we worked with Educational Impact to set up South Carolina's premium library, they were very careful to include courses that, of course, match up to the South Carolina teaching standards and our leadership rubric, which is the PDEP leadership rubric. Um, but also, they wanted to make sure to include some topics that have been really popular and uh, in demand with teachers as we've talked to them in the past few years. Everything from technology integration to reading and literacy, serving students with diverse learning needs, making sure that we support new teachers, uh, trauma-informed instruction, how to support students, uh, social emotional development. There are materials that uh, students leadership development. There are courses that match up to all of those priorities inside the professional learning library and you can actually search by tag when you're in there. Um, that's a good segue before I show you exactly how to get to it. I have one last poll about the professional learning library, which is what course or topic would you like to see in the library? Feel free to just enter your response in as you're hearing more about it. Um, we have an amazing partner and they have said they want to add content that is specific to South Carolina's needs. So if you can think of, you know, if I could have a free professional learning course on X or a set of videos on Y, please type in that response into the poll. We'd love to know um, what you're interested in and, and what we could provide. Um, and that will, I think that word cloud will show up for all of us um, as, as it's in the chat. If we head to the next slide, I'll show you exactly how to get to the professional learning library. Um, so here's where you can find it. If you go to sclead.org and you click on learning and then click on library, you can filter by the South Carolina teaching standards or by those PDEP leadership standards 
and once you click on a course title, you can then view it and decide whether you want to um, check out and register for that course. Um, it's important to know that we've already designated any course that starts with PADEP or starts with SCTS, we've designated it as eligible for renewal credits. So when you click on the course description, you'll be able to see how many renewal credits you can earn by successfully completing that course. We've also encouraged districts to offer you renewal credit for any of the courses that are in the professional learning library. We are excited to be able to provide a free resource for you to get some of those recertification credits that are needed um, towards your 120 renewal credits you need every five years. Um, on the next slide, we have a few examples of how the PLL could work in practice. Um, going back to those two teachers that we discussed before, you could use different courses in the professional learning library to support maybe a PLC's discussion of instructional mo uh, moves specifically connected to the environment. So for example, if we click on the first course, this would be a course that uh, would align with the South Carolina Teaching Standards Environment Indicator in the rubric, and it's a little more basic. It's going to talk to you about setting up your classroom, making sure it's accessible, creating that safe environment. If you happen to be going through accreditation, this is also aligned to that um, effective uh, measures of engaging teaching from the Cognia Elliott rubric. Um, that could be one that would be really good for some of your newer teachers that are starting there. But if we click again, related to that same set of indicators, there's a more in-depth uh, course that talks about some of Marzano, Silver, and Strong's research around academic literacy, implementing research-based strategies around meeting the needs of diverse learners. So that could help that teacher who maybe has a little bit more experience and instead of moving to a, from a two to a three on the indicator might be working on moving from a three to a four. If you'd like to learn more about the professional learning library, how you could use these courses, how to access them, we invite you to sign up for either of these trainings. Um, the first link that we'll put in the chat is for a training October 13th. Um, the training is just an hour and it will take you through and give you a chance to sign in and test your access to the professional learning library. If you're an educator, we also invite you to come to a district training that's happening on October 27th. It'll be geared a little bit more towards districts, but most of the information is the same. So you're welcome. And that's the second link that we have in the chat as well. Both of those are after school hours and the hours are specifically mentioned inside the registration link. But we would love to see as many of you as possible join us to learn more about the professional learning library. Um, as we head back to the chat before I transition to renewal credits, um, Kim and Vicki, do you mind sharing what are some of the things, the courses or topics that people would like to see in the professional learning library? Do y'all mind coming on the mic? Am I putting you on the spot too much? What are some of our bigger words there? If you can scroll up and see it. It looks like assessments um, is a big one that they mm -hmm. want to see. Uh, gifted and talented see, students. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's what I was going to say. That one came up a lot. Gifted and talented. Um, specific content areas they would want to see. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. something that's cool that's already there. You can go in and filter by content area. So if you're in the My Plan, which is where you go in to view videos of professional practice, you can zoom in to pre-K through three. You can zoom in to math classrooms, science classrooms, related arts. So we really like that the library is really sorted to help you find exactly what you need. Thanks so much, Vicki and Kim. Anything else before we, we move on to how do you get credit for this stuff? I'll just say there are also some courses surrounding student engagement, and that's one that came up a few times. So thank you so much. And Kim, Vicki, Faye, and myself are all enrolling in courses right now and trying to take them. We don't think that you should, we should offer something to you unless we know it's good. So we're also going through some courses. And so far, we're really, really excited about the quality of content that we're seeing. On the next slide, um, we did just want to mention um, how 
might someone earn credit for some of these job embedded professional learning experiences? If you're taking a course with your PLC or you're doing some kind of work with your PLC to improve your curriculum, or you're taking on something competency based like a micro credential, which we'll get to next, we do have on our website some guidance for districts about how those job embedded activities can actually count for renewal credit as well using mainly option six, which is professional training, but for some of that project based competency work, option nine may also be appropriate. Um, so to, to zoom you in into one more um, personalized professional development opportunity, we'll turn our attention on the next slide to micro credentials. Um, micro credentials are a competency based personalized self directed assessment that is going to recognize a specific teaching or leadership skill related to your practice. The evidence you collect should be stuff you're already doing in your classroom, already doing to support your school leadership that demonstrates a competency or a skill. If I think about the whole field of education and all the things we could work on, the whole South Carolina teaching standards rubric and the whole PADEP leadership rubric, that's kind of like a field of collard greens. It's a lot of different things. A micro credential is not just a row, it's probably one individual bunch of greens that's showing you the skill that you are demonstrating. Um, the South Carolina Department of Education is really proud that we've made some progress to offering competency based job embedded professional learning to you. And we do have a micro credential academy, um, which uh, which walks you through the process and pays for the process of you doing a micro credential. We have one of those starting in November. It's open to educators, to coaches, to assistant principals and principals. Um, we are really happy to help you out uh, with enrolling in that. And if we head to the next slide, um, we do have some more information. So the topics available through the Micro Credential Academy are listed there on the left, and you can check them out. We have an orientation happening on November 9th. There's one at 9 a.m. and then there's one after school at 4 p.m. depending on your schedule. If you wanna go ahead and enroll um, uh, and register for those orientation sessions, we'll put that link into the chat for you. Um, the cost of participating in the Micro Credential Academy, Heather, is actually free. Um, there's no cost to you. Um, and we partner for the Micro Credential Academy with the University of South Carolina to use the Carolina CRED platform, which is actually aligned to the South Carolina teaching standards in some of the micro credentials they've created. But you don't necessarily need the State Department to go out and do micro credentials. So we're also really excited about the micro credentials offered through the National Education Association and the NEA. If you are an SCEA member, those micro credentials are completely free to you. And there are several high quality ones, including a high quality strand on how to be a mentoring teacher or a cooperating teacher. If you are not an SCEA member, those micro credentials are $75 a piece, I believe. Um, Digital Promise is another platform that we've worked with before um, and we use in some of our leadership development programs. And they, many of the micro credentials offered through Digital Promise are free. Others of them are very low cost. I've seen ranging from $25 to $70. Um, so those are definitely options for you. If micro credentials are just something you want to learn more about, I'd encourage you to go ahead and register um, for the Micro Credential Academy um, and join us for that orientation. We'd love to have you there. And that's that Google Doc that Vicki dropped into the chat. Um, our office also offers other more traditional uh, professional learning opportunities and cohorts. And on the next slide, um, we'd love to share with you that Foundations and School Leadership is a cohort specifically for teacher leaders. So whether you are a teacher leader who wants to lead without leaving the classroom, or you're hoping to have a path that takes you into coaching, district office, or school, school level leadership, um, all of those groups find their homes inside of Foundations and School Leadership. It is a year long experience, so you meet together with your cohort about eight times over the course of the year. Um, and we're happy there are two different cohorts of 
foundations and school leadership. One starts in February, one's uh, February 1st, and one starts at the end of the month on February 28th. Um, we're happy to drop those links into the chat for you. Um, and then the last professional learning opportunity I'll put out there is one that's very close to my heart, um, which is uh, these cute little students that you see on the slide are actually students at Nexton Elementary School down in Berkeley County. And they were one of the schools that helped us pilot a character and leadership development curriculum written by the John Maxwell Foundation uh, that we offered free to schools in South Carolina last year. And the essential part of that curriculum is giving students the opportunity to sit in circles and talk about their values and through uh, a facilitated conversation using the curriculum that's provided to them and the kind of conversations and relationships that students build when they participate in this curriculum are really just heartwarming to watch and the communities uh, that were built at Nexton, but at many of the schools, we had elementary school, middle schools and high schools pilot this curriculum. We're offering it again free to any teacher, any school that is interested. So if you want to learn more about that, um, Vicki will also share in the chat. We're working her really hard today. Um, the link to the Maxwell Leadership Curriculum Info Sessions. Um, those will be November 30th, one at 10 a.m. and one at 4 p.m. Um, and feel free to contact me directly if you can't make that session, but you're really interested in getting a hold of that curriculum for your students. Um, we can make sure that we share those orientation materials with you. We'd love to have more schools participating in that. Um, moving to our last two letters in ADEPT, uh, we want to share a few resources that might be helpful for you, uh, whether it's for your own professional growth and development or whether you are responsible for supporting some of the other teachers that you work with. Um, the first support set of supports we want to provide for you, we want to acknowledge that the South Carolina teaching standards, even though they're very important to our office, they aren't the only language for describing strong teaching practices. There are many ways to describe those practices. Those practices don't actually differ that much across the different frameworks. You need strong planning, strong instruction, you need a way to assess, um, and then you need to think about the environment you're creating for students. Those are pretty common uh, across different tools. But if you are in a school or a district that's going through accreditation, the Elliott tool and Cognia might be more top of your mind because it's something you're already thinking and reflecting and analyzing. And if your school is on the journey to becoming more personalized, either inside of classrooms or personalizing pathways for students as a school, it may be that South Carolina's personalized learning framework is something that's more top of mind for you. Um, and so we suggest that if you are using one of these frameworks to improve instruction, you check out the crosswalks we have that walk you through the links between those frameworks and the South Carolina teaching standards. With these crosswalks, you can zoom in to the Elliott tool to focus on, on, in, on engaging practices and consider where your school's areas of need and strength are or you could zoom in to the professional learning framework to really focus on how to design classroom instruction to ensure all learners are engaged and getting what they need. These crosswalks that we're dropping into the chat um, will help you do that work. And in a moment, I'll show you the place you can find the crosswalk to the Elliott on our website. If you are joining us from higher ed, we also have uh, crosswalk to the in-task standards. If you're joining us and you are a school counselor, um, we also have links to, uh, or a school librarian, uh, crosswalks between those rubrics and the South Carolina teaching standards. The next resource we wanna share for you um, is that this year was the first year of full implementation for our school counselors, librarians, and speech language professionals. So we'll drop into the chat the link to those guidelines. The main changes are seen here in bullet point form. Um, for the school counselors, the biggest change was shifting to a rubric and then having that student growth goal. For our librarians, the biggest shift was shifting to a school library plan that consolidated some of the different documents in their evaluation, um, and then having a professional goal in those off years where they're not being observed formatively or summatively. Um, and then for speech language professionals, we really separated out those observations of IEP sessions versus therapy sessions and added in the conferences and the conferencing piece. Um, if you head to 
the next slide. Um, Michelle, I see that the Maxwell link doesn't give you access. I'll pop another one in there that might be uh, my editing link to the site. So I'll make sure to give you guys a public link in just a moment at the end of the webinar. Um, another resource we want to share with you is we've just redone the coaching section of our teacher evaluation website. We realized that we had a lot of resources that were behind a wall just for evaluators. And there's so many people that haven't been through the South Carolina Teaching Standards Evaluator Training that might want access to things like the pre-conference questions that align the pre-conference with the Student Learning Objective Conference. So you could do both of those at the same time. Or maybe you wanna see those connections. What does it look like for students for each section of the South Carolina Teaching Standards? That's that student-centered rubric connections document, or maybe it's your first time coaching or your first time mentoring and you want some hints for choosing a reinforcement or refinement. There's a great document in the post-conference planning section that can walk you through those pieces. Um, so that link is also in the chat and available for you. Um, to end this section, we're just really, really happy that so many people were able to join us this afternoon, and we wanna encourage you to stay connected with us. You deserve to know what's going on with teacher evaluation and support. And so we want to show you where you can go uh, to access some of these same documents. Um, the first thing we want to share is our web address. So if you go to ed.sc.gov and go to educators and educator effectiveness, you can get to our effectiveness page. And if you go to ed.sc.gov, educators and school and district administrators, you can get to that page. Um, in the interest of time, I won't show you actually how to do those clicks, um, but if you search for educator effectiveness or school and district administrators on the State Department website, you'll get there. Over in the right-hand corner of the tic-tac-toe box on our teacher evaluation page, the very top link is the teacher evaluation resources, and that's where all of the forms, the actual South Carolina teaching standards rubric, and all of those coaching resources we just shared were, will are. Um, and then over on the left hand side, the communications corner um, in the top left hand corner, anything that we share with districts as far as our monthly office hours with them around educator evaluation, FAQs that we get, um, resources when we go out and do public presentations, we load those here. So we want you to have access to those as well. Um, our professional learning opportunities, we add down in the bottom circle. So as we have new trainings that we're adding, we always make sure to update that page as well. Um, we're moving into our final section of the webinar um, where we'll ask you to type in some information into the chat um, and we'll invite you to keep questions coming. Um, so first, we would love to know content-wise, you've seen a lot of resources. We've dropped about 11 links, maybe 10 so far, into the chat for you so far. Uh, but we want to know what other information or resources or professional learning opportunities should we be offering to support you? So if you could type into the chat, what kinds of things would you like to see coming out of our office? Are there any things on this list that already look useful to you? We would love that feedback in the chat. And then we'll share, share a few more formal ways to get feedback from you uh, in our coming slides. But we'd love to hear from you. Um, what are some of the resources or professional learning you'd like us to offer to you? On the next slide, we just want to remind you that as you're typing those responses into the chat, a big part of what we do is try to take that feedback and turn it into action. Um, whether it's the informal feedback we gather during a training or a webinar, or it's structured studies on the state's evaluation model, we really care what you think and how it actually feels implemented in a school versus how it was dreamt up um, to begin with in policy. Um, You'll see here that three of the more formal studies conducted on the state's evaluation system are listed at the top. Um, the very first one in 2016, we had more than 10,000 um, educators respond to that first survey, and the data helped us actually zoom in and select the South Carolina Teaching Standards rubric and focus the evaluation system 
on those pre-conferences and post-conferences and getting more immediate feedback from observations to be more useful. Um, stakeholder feedback has also really helped us in revamping SLO training, um, providing more coaching training for evaluators and principals, um, making sure that our special areas evaluations were also growth focused um, and including those pre and post conferences as part of the cycle. Um, we are really excited to get stakeholder feedback from you. Um, about what else you'd like to see from our office. And so we're going to drop a chat, a link into the chat for a form we'd like you to fill out. We also know what, that we're nearing the end of our hour, so we'll take questions. Um, but if you are someone who needs to head out soon, um, we would love for you to do that form first. Um, and specifically, when you click on that link to the survey, um, one of the things we're going to ask you for feedback about is recruitment and retention. And for larger context, uh, recruitment and retention has been a topic in just about every rubric training, every leadership training, every webinar that we've had. What's on the mind of teachers and districts is that recruitment and retention is difficult right now. Um, as a result, our office last year created a Talents Matter webinar to help link up principals and districts with best practices to really create a culture that attracts and retains highly effective teacher. And this year, uh, actually, Dr. Howard is a crucial part of partnering with the U.S. Human Capital Academy to offer both a principal network and a district network to focus on what those strategies are that schools and districts can use to really focus on recruitment and retention. But we want to know from you, we know that the legislature in Proviso 1.114 um, recommended that a task force be convened um, before this spring to really focus on recruitment and retention again. And so we would love to know from you, and these are some of the questions in the survey, what do you think about recruitment and retention? What recommendations do you have about recruitment, retention, educator compensation, educator evaluations, working conditions? We would love to collect that information and please know that we will share the ideas from the survey, any ideas from the chat anonymously, um, with the organizers of that task force just to make sure that your input is heard. Um, but we always want the voices of teachers who are closest to the issue to be reflected in any decisions that are made. On the next slide, we're nearing the end of our time together. So we'd really, really appreciate before you sign off, if you take a chance to um, do the survey. But as we're wrapping up, um, we would also like to welcome you to put any questions that you have in the chat box. If a lot of questions come in and we don't get to all of them, know that we'll read and discuss each question as a team. Um, and I know that the team has probably already gathered some questions. So let's start with those. Any questions in the chat that either we've already addressed or we still need to address? I think the only thing that we haven't addressed is if you could please um, get that link to the Maxwell um, yes. sessions. Absolutely. Um, and I Thank see you. just some input in there from Michael Ann from Furman um, that the professional learning library should be helpful for teacher prep. Um, we absolutely want to get uh, access to the learning library for not just the folks who have access in SC LEAD at our colleges and universities, um, but also for those other clinical supervisors and folks who are coaching teacher candidates. And that's something that we're working on actively with our learning object repository or instruction hub team to see how we can push on getting uh, universities and even teacher candidates potentially um, access to those materials. So thank you for that suggestion, Michael Ann. I'll take a moment to try to bring up my Maxwell link and get a good Maxwell link in there. Uh, but as I'm doing that, are we seeing any other questions? Please type them into the chat and get them out there. Aha, it is my editing link. Thank you so much to whoever spotted that. Try this link for the Maxwell signups. And please let me know if that doesn't work. Amanda, thanks for the question. Are we going to get a copy of the slideshow? We'll probably publish it 
um, on the web um, as well as the video once we get it there. So if you check that communication section of our website, um, it'll be published there. Give us a week though. It usually takes us a while to make sure we can get videos closed captioned. Lilla, can you tell us if the micro credential session on November 9th is going to be recorded or if they can access that if they aren't able to attend at that time? Um, I actually don't know the answer to that, whether our uh, facilitators are going to hold tight, but I would encourage that person to go ahead and register and just put a note um, in your registration about what you have going on. I'll also put an email um, into the chat of one of our facilitators. So if you want to reach out to her directly, you can you can ask her about making arrangements for that. I'm just not sure exactly how they've structured it this year, but um, you can reach out to Keisha Grant in our office. Um, and I'd encourage you, uh, some of you may have participated in our teacher book club last year. Just like the teacher book club, the Micro Credential Academy is a chance to meet educators from across the state. That's really, it's a really fun time to talk to other teachers who are working on different things, uh, but have some of the same needs that you do. So we love, we love hosting those events. Thank you to everyone who's come. I know it's the end of the day and you are probably tired and ready to move on to your next thing. So if you need to go, we will not hold it against you. If you want to stick around and ask us more questions, please do. But just know at from the bottom of our hearts, we are so thankful for all the work you do to support your students and support your colleagues. Um, and we hope that you have an excellent week and continue to have just one of the best school years you've had yet. Thank you so much for coming, everyone. On our last slide, we do have our contact info for our office. Um, we are at this moment a small but mighty team, um, but uh, we are excited to support you and whatever your needs are. Um, yeah. If that is not working for you, try this link, Michelle. And then once you get there, just click on implementation and it, that should take you there if that link directly to the signups isn't working for you.